Shouts to all you men out there that call yourself wanting to do house dates. So, I don't mind doing a house date, but these are my standards when it comes to house dates. First off, if I'm driving to you, to your house, I automatically, the first thing I want you to do, the very first thing I want you to do is fill up my tank. Like, no questions asked. Fill up my tank. Fill it all the way up to the clicks. Not halfway, not put halfway and a quarter, not a quarter tank. Fill it all the way up. We going straight to the gas station and you're gonna fill up my tank. Second, once you get done filling up my tank, I expect a home cooked four course meal. Organic, preferably. These are my standards. Like I'm not coming to your house unless you're- She shouldn't be talking about dating at this stage of her life because I think she has other priorities. Her finances need some attention. You're willing to fill up my tank and give me good food. Okay, first thing is, on the first day, baby, let's be realistic. A man should not be responsible to fill your gas tank up. It's just like your happiness. Your gas tank should be filled like your happiness cup should be filled and our shit should just overflow when we meet. Um, I should come with a full tank of happiness just like I should come with a full tank of gas, baby. And you should come with a full tank of happiness just like you should come with a full tank of gas. Um, when it comes to the home-cooked meals, baby, that ain't a problem. Home cooked meals should be a bonding experience though. It shouldn't be something that feels like an obligation. When did some women start expecting men to pay for their needs and wants in exchange for spending time with them? The sense of entitlement blows my mind. Stop trying to go on dates broke. What you need is a job or better paying job if you are expecting someone else to fill up your tank. You can tell she's just talking to hear herself talk. Why did she have to say so much about a full tank? Girl, stay home. Ladies, if you want to stay single, then please listen to her as she teach you the book of singlelations. And that's why she is single, unreasonable. She shouldn't be dating if she's that broke. This is just a quick reminder. Make sure you watch the full video so you don't miss our self-development section. Today, we have a special lesson. It's destined for those who have big dreams or goals. It will give you the key to achieve almost anything in life, so stay tuned. She should be thankful that he was willing to go for a house date rather than dealing with her unrealistic demands. Many women don't even get a date, so she's lucky in that sense. With demands like that, I doubt many guys would be willing to meet her expectations, especially just to get to know her. If she doesn't adjust her standards, her dating life is going to get a lot more difficult and she might find her dating pool shrinking quickly. It's not normal to ask a stranger to cover things like filling your tank just because you're going on a date. It makes you wonder if she's dealing with financial issues. If she's using this as an opportunity to lighten her financial load, she might need to rethink her priorities. Instead of focusing so much on dating, maybe she should be focusing on improving her financial situation that would probably benefit her more in the long run than placing heavy expectations on a potential partner. Her high standards could be a big reason she's still single. When you're asking for too much just on the first date, good guys might not even want to take that first step. No one is saying she should not have standards, but they need to be reasonable. If she keeps expecting too much from the start, she might miss out on good opportunities simply because she's making it harder than it needs to be. They started dating two days ago, and she thought it was his responsibility to pay $470 of her child's shopping expenses, but it backfired. He removed himself from that situation, leaving her with the bill. $472. Okay, are you going to be paying today? How are you paying? I'll be wearing the hottest shoes. Thank you. Two and $300 worth of shoes and don't even want to pay for the stuff I had to pay for, yeah, because I've been dating this guy. For, for, for about maybe two to three days. Look at him. He can spend two to three hundred dollars on some Nike, but he didn't want to hit me pay for my baby's stuff, so. Because God don't like me. You couldn't pay for my baby's stuff at his school, and he only one years old. Girl, don't your child has a dad? Did she date two to three days? He did the right thing. Bro, why you go to the grocery store with her? I'm sorry, this is crazy. Two to three days, and he's supposed to pay a $400 grocery tab for kids that aren't his? He isn't responsible for your children after two to three months, let alone two to three days. 
How is she expecting someone she has been dating for only two to three days to cover that bill? If she's lucky, he might stick around, but this kind of situation could easily make him reconsider their relationship. What is even more surprising is that she thinks he's obligated to pay, even though they were strangers just two days ago. The sense of entitlement is on another level. Dating used to be about two people coming together to get to know each other and form something meaningful. But now, it seems like some people treat it as an opportunity to get financial support. It makes you wonder, where is the child's father? He's the one who should be responsible for those expenses, not someone she just met. Why would a guy she just met a couple of days ago be expected to cover her bills? Is she dating him just to lift her financial burden? If money is her issue, she'd be better off finding a job or another solution. Is she using dating as a way to relieve financial pressure? Personally, I don't think it is a healthy or effective strategy. It's rather going to push guys away and make it harder for her to form genuine connections. If she's serious about finding a partner, she needs to focus on building a relationship based on mutual respect and understanding, not on who's going to pay her bills. We know each person have their own form of selecting partner. The woman in the next clip isn't different, but her requirement is from a different world. I'm sorry, but if a guy picks me up in certain cars for a date, I'm just not going. Like, I'm just not going. Like, I'm sorry, but you can't tell me. Leave my car alone. This Prius, you're, uh-uh. No, I'd rather not go on a date. I'm sorry. Like, I can tell by the car you drive what kind of person you're going to be. And this is for the boys, too. If y'all drive these cars, you need to reevaluate yourself. Well, I don't like girls that wear those headphones. You don't got AirPods? I understand wanting to be with a top tier guy who's super cool and drives an SRT, Hellcat. That's dope and all. But like, bro, how conceited is that? I Where are all the good men? I am not getting in anybody's Prius. Totally agree with her. I wouldn't even let my parents pick me up in one of those. Some women want a responsible, emotionally intelligent man who will be there with them through everything. Some women want status. The last thing I am worried about is what the man drives. So many other things are so much more important than that. It's pointless to even say anything at this point. Just let her live in that state of mind and later we will see where all the good guy videos. The most interesting part of this video is that she probably does not even have a car and decided to sit in the front seat of her parents' car. Talking about the kind of car a guy must have before she can date him. Honestly, she does not need to worry about that because nowadays, guys are not as willing to invest a lot when they barely know the lady. In most cases, she is going to be the one getting herself to the date. Instead of focusing on the car he drives, she should be thinking about more important qualities that actually make someone a good partner. It seems like she's forgotten that everyone goes through different stages in life. Maybe the reason he's driving a certain car is because that is where he is right now. If she only looks at the car, she might miss out on a great guy who could be a wonderful husband just because he is not driving something flashy. A car should be the last thing on her mind when getting to know someone. If she's too focused on that, she might end up being the one making videos later, asking, where did all the good guys go? What she won't realize is that she had the chance to secure one, but passed him up just because he was driving a Toyota. Prioritizing the wrong things can really backfire in dating. A good relationship is built on much more than what kind of car someone drives. I don't want to hear all why men always have to pay, because women are the prize. I'm not going half, I'm not tipping, I'm not all my turn, I'm not your girlfriend, okay? McDonald's don't suffice for me no more. I'm grown. I'm grown! Society have these new age women. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. What is happening? Even women getting tired of hearing this nonsense. So you grown, pay for yourself. If you have to state you're grown, you're probably not grown, grown, but can't pay your own bills. She made a valid point. She is not his girlfriend, so he doesn't need to take her anywhere fancy. That's why a simple walk in the park is the perfect solution for this type of situation. 
Her mindset seems heavily influenced by social media, which promotes the idea that everyone deserves the world. But soon enough, reality will show her that she has been consuming the wrong information. Since she says she is an adult, then this is her chance to show it by paying for her own meal. That is what grown-ups do. How can she call herself grown while expecting someone else to buy her food? Being independent and handling your own needs is part of maturity. And if she wants to prove she's grown, covering her own expenses is a good way to start. Social media can really skew people's expectations, making them think they deserve more than what's reasonable, especially early in a relationship. If she wants a healthy relationship down the line, showing that she can take care of herself is a much better approach than expecting someone to provide for her right off the bat. I hope she will eventually realize one day that building relationships is not about expensive meals or grand gestures. It's about getting to know each other and being responsible for your own needs. If she continues with these expectations, she might miss out on meaningful experiences and relationships. Welcome to our self-development section. For those who tried and failed or those who dream of owning their own business, but for some reason haven't happened yet, in today's self-development section, we are going to give you the missing piece. After watching it, you will have a clear idea of what to do to achieve your goal. Think what I said. Success is 5% strategy, 95% mindset. Most people spend 95% of their time on strategy, 5% if any at all, on mindset. It's about the mind. This is a small clip, but the message is powerful. If you decide to take the above option, you have a better chance of having an easier life in the future. It's not guaranteed, but if you work hard in your dream, the probability is bigger. The first video has vital information for those who want to achieve big goals. I would say the mindset is the key to success, as it will include the daily routine, the discipline required, and much more, so make sure you use the right tool. I need you guys to start acting on your dreams, get out of the planning stage and just do it. You will learn everything you need along the way. You don't have to be great to start, but you will need to start to be great. So think about that and start today. No more excuses. I also agree with the point you just made. This is where people get stuck. They know what they need to do, but for some reason, they lack the most important thing that would make a difference. With the right mindset, we can achieve almost everything. This is what will differentiate the winners from the losers. The mindset was the main reason those big achievers got to their position. They didn't achieve it by quitting the first time they found a challenge. Any time they found an obstacle, their mindset pushed them to find a way out. They either change the way they are doing things, or they do something else. This is what you also have to do. So if you want to start a business but haven't started it yet, because you are still waiting for the right moment, you are just wasting precious time. You need to start today. The right time is now. And those who already tried and decided to stop because they got demotivated or because they failed multiple times, you need to know that this is nothing. You can still achieve great things, but you must be ready to do it again. You need to try it, and if you fail again, it doesn't matter. It was just another lesson. So try again until you get it. Since you said that, something came to my mind, and I would like to add another point. Sure, go ahead. Also, we can't forget that in most cases, big achievement is the result of multiple failures. This is what most people don't understand. You need to be prepared to fail if you want to achieve something. You better believe that everyone who made it to that level has failed multiple times before they got to where they are. The only difference was their approach to the problem they encountered. Those issues were never enough to make them quit their dreams, and you have to adopt the same mindset. You can change the strategy, the business idea. You can also move to another country if needed. But the only thing you can't do is stop. You never quit. Be a winner. This is the end of today's video, and we hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. We really appreciate that.